Well, it's time now for our health report. And joining us now is Africa 54 health correspondent Lino Mudu. Lino, you have some new information on HIV AIDS, yeah? That's right, Vince. And the United Nations AIDS Agency, UNAIDS, says new HIV infections and death from AIDS are decreasing, making it possible to control the epidemic by the year 2030 and eventually end it, quote, in every region, in every country. The agency says the number of people infected with HIV was stabilizing at about 35 million worldwide. The epidemic has killed 39 million of the 78 million people infected since the 1980s. Since 2001, new HIV infections have fallen by 38%, UNAIDS reported. AIDS deaths have fallen 35% since peaking in 2005. UNAIDS says at the end of 2013, more some 12.9 million HIV positive people had access to antiretroviral therapy, a dramatic improvement on the 10 million who were in treatment just one year earlier. In the meantime, the World Health Organization is warning that its goal to end AIDS by 2030 will not be reached if the, most, the people most at risk continue to not receive the health services they need. The global progress on the HIV response is in jeopardy. This is due to failure to provide adequate HIV services for key groups such as men who have sex with men, people in prison, and people who inject drugs. This finding and others were published in the World Health Organization's latest report titled Consolidated Guidelines on HIV Prevention, Diagnosis, Treatment and Care for Key Populations. Gottfried Henschel is the director of the HIV department of the WHO. If we do want to eliminate HIV uh, by 2030, which is a fairly ambitious target, but I think it is a realistic target, it is, will be realistic only if uh, we managed to focus much more strongly and much more effectively on key populations. Key populations and their sex partners account for as much as 51% of new infections in Nigeria and more than 27% in Mozambique. The WHO recommends that, in addition to using condoms, men who have sex with men should also take antiretroviral AIDS drugs for prevention. This is known as pre-exposure prophylaxis or PrEP. But observers say in many countries, key populations are left out of national HIV plans. Stigma, discrimination, violence, punitive laws, and social, legal and social environments increase HIV vulnerability. And punitive environments have been shown to limit the availability and access to services by these populations. The WHO says there is an urgent need to address the problem. Access to health care is poorest in countries where prostitution, homosexual intercourse and the use of drugs are illegal. Individuals fear threats of detention if they visit health centers. The first step in, uh, in combating these, um, the, the negative environments that key populations face is the understanding that health systems and health care workers have a duty of care. Um, and that anybody from uh, whatever background they have requires respectful um, services and that's the duty of healthcare providers. To the WHO report released ahead of the International AIDS Conference in Melbourne, Australia next week says by the end of 2013, around 13 million people worldwide were taking AIDS drug treatment, a 20% drop in HIV-related death between 2009 and 2012. Joining us via Skype from Los Angeles, California, for more on the subject is Dr. Jeffrey Safrit, Director of Clinical and Basic Research with the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. Dr. Safrit, welcome to the show. Hi, uh, Lenore, and thanks. I'm, I'm happy to be here. It's great to have you. Let me have your, your take on these two reports. UNAID says there is some hope that by 2030 we could be able to control the, epide the AIDS epidemic. However, WHO warns of key population not having access to the proper treatment, which can actually jeopardize <coughs> the, the effort. What do you make of it? This seems to be a contradiction in a way. Uh, it's, it's a great uh, point, uh, Lenora. While it does seem to be a contradiction, it's, I think it's critical uh, for UNAIDS, as they always have done, to set targets uh, in order, especially in order to reach the, the underserved populations that have been noted so far on the program already. 
uh, and, and in order to reach the ultimate goal of ending uh, AIDS by 2030, which is, is reasonable. Now, from your perspective, as someone who works in the pediatric AIDS field, what do you see? Uh, are we able, do you think that there are very good steps that have been made to, to really control the epidemic among children, among babies? Well, I think what the report is really doing is calling attention to gaps that aren't being addressed. And, and an important gap is the gap in pediatric treatment. Uh, currently, only a quarter of, of children living with HIV actually have access to, to treatment. And at, at, at EGPATH, we're definitely working uh, very, very di diligently to, to change that, uh, along with providing pregnant women with the services they need to try and prevent transmission to their babies in the first place. Now, I wanted to and ask you something about uh, a recent news, uh, news that came out about the Mississippi baby. This is a baby that was believed to have, have been functionally cured from HIV, now has been found to have detectable levels of the virus. What do you, what do you make of this? What does this mean in the efforts to really to fight HIV AIDS among babies? Doc, Dr. Safrid, did you hear my question? Well, it, 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 yes, I did. It was breaking up a little bit, but I, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can hear you. Great. So, you know, the, the Mississippi baby case is, is a very interesting case, and, and I think we need to remember it is one case so far, and so we still have a lot to learn. Uh, and clearly, it, it, I think everyone is disappointed by the setback of finding HIV uh, in this child after two years of not being on therapy. Um, but um, what it has allowed us to do is really to uh, help us understand, uh, help researchers understand more about how to control H HIV and, and hopefully ultimately develop a cure. Now, the, the, the baby represents um, you know, really a, an unprecedented immune system response to HIV and, and demonstrates clearly that very early treatment um, two infants right after they're born uh, can potentially significantly affect the level of HIV in their bodies and, and potentially even get rid of it. And, and, you know, the fact that it came back after two years is disappointing, but um, I think much more research needs to be done, and we're certainly, uh, hopefully, uh, going to uh, ha play a role in that. We've, we okay. have... Um, okay, ahead, Dr. Safri, that's all the time we have. We have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. And that's our Africa Help report for today. Back to you, Vincent. Well, Lino, thank you very much. Uh, be sure to watch Lino Madu's health reports every Tuesday and Thursday right here on Africa 54.